All right, welcome into the Alabama Football Report. The Crimson Tide in a very up and down game. One that, uh, you know, definitely kept me on the edge of my seat uh, for a very, very long time until later in the fourth quarter. Um, look, Alabama tonight did not play very well at all. From beginning to end, um, let's just be honest, they played like, they kind of played like crap. Um, but I guess not from the beginning to the end because towards the end, they actually did start playing a little bit better. They opened it up, um, you know, late in the fourth quarter, scoring 28 points in the fourth quarter. It was, uh, let's see, 14 to 13 at the end of the third. So if that tells you anything, um, Alabama was up by one point going into that fourth quarter where they outscored South Florida 28 to three. We're going to break down my reaction to this. And basically what we're going to do, guys, we're going to go through my keys to victory for Alabama and talk about how they didn't do a single one of them. But make sure you guys are subscribed right here to the Alabama Football Report. We did have a very fun time during our Alabama football watch party for this South Florida game. A lot of uh, a lot of bad words um, were said during this game. A lot of you know um, involuntary cussing came out of this game. Um, so if you guys if you guys watched that, you guys kind of saw me melt down a lot throughout this game. But we're gonna have free informative news and rumors for you. We, you know, had a very good time during our watch party tonight. So do not miss out. Make sure you guys are subscribed at youtube.com slash at Roll Tide TV. First thing I want to talk about in this game, one of the only real injuries that came out of this game was from Cole Adams. Kayla DeBoer said he injured his arm. When Now, when it happened in the game, he was holding his leg, and man, that... That uh, did it very much so sent some chills up my spine. I did not like the look of that at all when Cole Adams went down. But from Kayla DeBoer's post-game press conference, it sounded like might not be as big of an issue as I thought it was, you know, when it happened. So we will, uh, you know, keep an eye out on that. But Cole Adams did go out in this game with an arm injury. And I guess we'll quickly touch um, on this as well. Um, Caden Proctor did not play in this game at all for Alabama was out the entire game with that left shoulder injury. So, you know, we'll talk about the offensive line and how they performed in this game uh, later on on the show. But uh, or Caden Proctor did not play in this game either. All right, so we'll go through my keys to victory for this game and just kind of discuss if Alabama was able to, uh, you know, do them or not. The first one was contain the quarterback Byron Brown in this game um, was still very very good for you I do not think Alabama um, was able to to really contain Byron Brown in this game he rushed for over a hundred yards for South Florida and actually passed for less yards than what he ran for um, but you know especially early on in this game Alabama could not stop this kid whatsoever. He was making all the right reads for South Florida. And, you know, that's really the biggest reason why South Florida was able to stay in this game for as long as they were. Because Byron Brown was able to extend plays and, you know, make a lot of plays for them. South Florida was not very good on third downs in this game. There were only two for 18, but they put up over 300 yards total. Um, total yards in this game. So South Florida was able to, you know, keep the ball on offense a lot. They were only able to score 16 points in this game. But, man, Byron Brown, you know, Alabama did, was not able to stop him at all on the ground tonight. So let me know your MVP for Alabama versus South Florida for the Crimson Tide. Obviously, they get the win in tonight's game. I think this one is a pretty easy one um, in my opinion but you know and we will talk about this guy later on in the show but let me know who is your MVP at the pinned comment of today's video uh, key to victory number two Jalen Milrow needs to ball out in this game and um, look there are a lot of circumstances in this but I would not categorize what Jalen Milrow did tonight as balling out now 
He did get hurt a couple of times um, by penalties. He had a 74-yard touchdown that was called back because of a hold on um, Wilkin Formby, and we'll talk about the offensive line as well in this game. But that's the thing that hurt Alabama most of tonight, right? 13 penalties for 120 yards. Um, that is that is just not going to cut it. Um, Alabama, Tony Sukalis put a, out a really, really good stat, if I could find it here on the fly. Wilkin Formby had like, had like four had like four penalties on him that took off like 120 yards or something. Um dang, it's too far back. I'm not gonna keep looking for it. But I mean, look, Jalen Milrow still uh 16 for 26. I wanted to see him throw the ball somewhere in the area of, you know, 20 to 25 times. And he did do that. Eh, wasn't amazing. Miss C.J. Dupree for a first down early in the game. Um, two rushing yards, though. Like I said, most of that was because of some of the sacks that, um, you know, he took some bad sacks and some that just at the end of the day didn't really matter. But, look, I, I do not categorize what Jalen Milrow did tonight as as balling out. And, you know, the fumble at the two-yard line was bad. I'm, I'm going to say that. I'll throw that out there. The fumble at the two-yard line was god-awful, and that uh, made me want to throw stuff. So, um, anger issue problems here. But uh, look, Jalen Milrow, I I still think he is the guy. He's gonna get. He's gonna continue to improve. And look, just playing Jane, man. He's gonna have to play better if they want to win games like at Tennessee, at LSU, uh, Georgia, coming to Bryant Denny. In a couple of weeks, you're going to Wisconsin next week. Flat out, Jalen Milrow is going to have to pay, play better if they want to win big time games like that. Key to victory number three: the defense has to swarm. And look, the defense only gave up 16 points, but at the end of the day, I also do not think the defense, you know, was as suffocating as I wanted them to be in this game. And I think. Uh, Kane Womack is going to say the same thing when he we hear from him this week, whenever that is. Um, you know, Alabama did not force any turnovers in this game on defense. They had three on the offensive side of the ball, which, oh, man, that really made me so mad. You had a fumble by Kendrick Law on the opening kickoff of the second half. You had a fumble by Jam Miller, and you also had that fumble on the two-yard line by Jalen Milrow. Defense wasn't able to uh, get any turnovers in this game. Had a couple opportunities, but uh, just uh, they weren't able to do it. So um, that is definitely going to be something that I expect Kane Womack to talk about, um, you know, during the press conferences, whenever he gets his opportunities this week. Um, I guess a couple of guys that I would like to shout out here on the defense, though, you know, I thought Tim Keenan. Played really well. Let me see if I can pull his stats up here really quickly for this game. Tim Keenan had nine total tackles. He had one and a half sacks, two and a half TFLs. I thought he had a couple pass breakups too, but possibly not. Um, I thought Jahad Campbell was all over the field as well. 11 tackles, eight being solo tackles in this game. I thought Justin Jefferson looked really, really good. Justin Jefferson tossed in this game, though, because of a... Uh, I guess you'll call it by the book targeting call. I just, I don't, I, you know, I wish those calls were not targeting, but, you know, we had the crown of his helmet down, and, you know, that's what happens in today's age. LT Overton had four quarterback Harrys. Um, so, look, the defense played okay. They only gave up 16 points, um, and they weren't getting any help whatsoever by the offense. You know, they were out there constantly because the offense was, you know, constantly going three and out in this game. So, you know, uh, I thought the defense could have been better, but for the most part, man, you know, they, uh, they were really the reason that Alabama was able to stay in this game as long as they were. All right, guys, I want to shout out our sponsor today, and that is Game Time. Game Time is the only ticketing app that I use, guys. If I wanted to go to an Alabama game or any Alabama event, 
I would use Game Time to get my tickets there. Game Time even has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks curation makes it easier to save more on sports. They've got concerts on there. They've got comedy shows on there. They've got theater on there. My girlfriend loves theater, so we got to mix that in every now and then as well. The Game Time Picks feature filters out all the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you guys do not have to waste time searching through thousands and thousands of tickets. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer you get to the start of the event. So if you want to do something last minute, you can do that on Game Time. Game Time has killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the lowest price is guaranteed. Look, one of my favorite features is the panoramic view from your seat. You just kind of look around. It's like you're sitting in the seat that you're going to buy. So there are no you know, surprises when you get to your seat. And they also have the lowest price guaranteed. Game Time will credit you 100%, 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Create an account and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Check out GameTime.co for last-minute tickets. Terms do apply, but again, create an account and redeem code C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S, CHATSPORTS, for $20 off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app today. What time is it? It's game time. The key to victory number four in this game was the O-line as I just punched the table like an idiot. The O-line continues that continuity. And uh, let's just call it like it is. They did not. They they did not whatsoever. I thought early in the game, I thought the O-line was playing pretty, pretty well. But um, as the game went on, you know, things really, really started to fall apart for Wilk and Formby. You know, had multiple penalties tonight, some really big ones. You know, one took, uh, you know, a touchdown off the board. That 74, 75-yard touchdown run from Jalen Milrow taken off the board because of a hold. You had Caden Proctor was out in this game, did not play. So what Alabama did was, for the most of the game, they took Tyler Booker and put him at that left tackle spot, and then they put Geno Vandermark at the left guard spot. Well... Geno Vandermark also had a very costly penalty early in the game that took another touchdown off the board for Alabama. And just those things are the ones that really make you want to, you know, kick a baby, man. It just, they, they make you so mad. Not really, but you guys know what I'm saying. They just like, there are those things. How many times last year did Alabama have touchdowns taken off the board because of stupid penalties? Way too many. Elijah Pritchett, coincidence? Maybe, you know, it, who knows? He went in there with about four minutes left in the game and Alabama started scoring points. So I've got to go back and watch to see if Elijah Pritchett was really, really the reason for that. But he definitely uh, helped himself out in this right tackle battle tonight, which, uh, you know, going into next week against Wisconsin on the road is going to be really, really big because I would assume you have Caden, or you have, yes, excuse me, Caden Proctor back at that left tackle position for you um, by next week, and that means Tyler Booker's going to go back to to left guard, and that right tackle battle is still going to be ongoing. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Pick a right tackle for me at this point. I thought Wilkin Formby played really, really well last week at the right tackle spot. Had a very bad game today. Let's just call it like it was. But, you know, let's be honest. Elijah Pritchett was only out there for like 10 plays at the end of the game too. So, you know, I, I'm not going to just strictly say, put Elijah Pritchett in. He's absolutely the guy. Send Wilk and Formby to Ohio State with Seth McLaughlin. I am not. I am not ready to, you know, go that crazy yet. Uh, maybe on our overreaction video where we're allowed to say, you know, kind of out-of-pocket things one time a week. But let me know in the comment section right now. Pick a right tackle for me. Type EP if you want it to be Elijah Pritchett or type WF if you think it's going to be Wilkin for me. The next key to victory in this game, the run game has to continue. And look, it did continue but probably not in the way that you thought it was going to. Definitely was not in the way that I thought it was going to. Look, Jalen Milrow, we talked about the fact that he had, you know, a lot of rushing yards taken off the boards because of stupid penalties. He did have two rushing touchdowns tonight, too. 
Uh, but look, the main guy for me rushing the ball tonight and in my opinion, the guy that should get Alabama's game ball is Jam Miller. He had 15 carries for 140 yards. You know, this coaching staff talked about the fact that, you know, this year it was really going to be a running back by committee type situation, and the hot hand was going to be the one to get the ball more. And we saw Justice Haynes. They tried, they tried to go with Justin Haynes for a majority of this game tonight, but um, well, I guess technically not a majority. I, I would say for the first three, you know, two and a half quarters, they really tried to get Justice Haynes working in the run game. They just weren't able to do it until the end of the game where he popped off for that 29-yard touchdown run. But, man, Jam Miller was the guy for Alabama tonight. Um, in my opinion, he is absolutely Alabama's MVP of this game. Um, and look, you know, it's fine if Justice Haynes does not go off every single night. That's why you have a Jam Miller, um, you know, alongside him. You know, together they're rushing for 186 yards on, on 28 carries and two touchdowns. That's pretty solid for you out of the run game. And if you're able to, you know, also clean those stupid, stupid penalties just constantly. And I will say... There probably should have been more, but there probably should have been less, too, because some of these penalties, the one on Wilkin for me, one of them anyways, I thought was terrible. He just, I mean, he puts the defensive lineman in the dirt. That's not a hold. Now, he had more than just one. So, you know, I'll give him one of those on the benefit of the doubt I did not think was a hold. But 13 penalties for 120 yards, three turnovers, that is not the way that you are going to win those big-time games you know, especially next week, going up against Wisconsin on the road. Big noon kickoff. Look, that's going to be a tough game, and you cannot afford to do stupid things like you did tonight against South Florida. So UCF, you know, hopefully we do not have to see them, uh, you know, for a while because every time we do, they give me heart palpitations. So, um, you know, a ba bad game for Alabama, but they come out on top 42-16. to 16. Ah. Man, the tough one for the Crimson Tide, but at least they come out on top.